Yeah, Shalom, Israel. We're the Israelites and we are out here to bring the word of God to you blacks and Hispanics that are out here. We're going to deal with this uh, situation concerning the Mike Brown situation. There's been a lot of things that have been going on, a lot of things that have been said, and a lot of controversy going on now. Well, we are here to teach our people who they are according to the Bible. What happened to Brother Mike Brown was real sad, but you know what? The Most High, he look out for his people. The Most High going to take care of us as long as we keep in his law, statute, commandments. If we live, we live with the Most High. That's what it says in Romans 10, four, I mean, Romans 14 and 3. If we live, we live with him. If we die, we die with him. Romans, is Romans 14 and 7. Romans 14 verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself. Nobody lived to themselves. Each and every one of us out here lived to the Most High. Whether you do a wickedness or you in righteousness, we live to the Most High. Go ahead. And no man dieth to himself. And no man dieth to himself. No man can just die to himself. Go ahead. For, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord. If we live, we live it unto the Most High. If you living by His laws and commandments or not, you will have to be judged by His laws and commandments in that time. When you get put to death or when Christ come back, we will have to be accountable for all our doings. Go ahead. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. And whether we die, we're going to die unto the Lord because that's the judge. That's our judge and he will judge us in that day. Whether we live therefore or die, uh -huh. we we are the Lord. Whether we live or die, we do belong to the Lord. What? Oh. This is about the controversy concerning the cigarettes. Ferguson police attempts to demonize Michael Brown, the unnamed African, oh, no. the unarmed African American teen killed by Officer Darren Wilson, may have hit a small snag. The very video they. The very video they released at the same time as they identified Wilson as the officer responsible for shooting Brown six times, including twice in the head, may show the opposite of what they intended. Supposedly, the video shows Brown robbing the store, taking a box of cigars. However, the attorney for Ferguson Market says that it was not anyone from the store that called police to report a robbery. In fact, a customer called to report what he viewed as a robbery. How then did the police get the tape? According to St. Louis News, the attorney said, during the course of Ferguson's investigation, the police department from Ferguson came to the store and asked for, a re for to review the tape. In other words, the tape was not viewed by police until after Michael Brown was dead in the street. In their fevered e effort to cast Brown in a negative light, they missed that the video seems to show Brown paying for the Swisher Suites. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Stop. It shall come to pass for you so-called blacks and Hispanics out here. It shall come to pass that you shall come upon these curses if you refuse to keep the Lord's statutes and commandments of the Most High God. But you blacks and you Hispanics out here refuse to obey the Lord thy God until this very day. And this is why we are under siege with these other nations leading over us and we're having power over us to this day. You continue to rebel against the word of God. So when you're rebelling against the word of God, there are things that are happening to us day after day. Matter of fact, I'm gonna break, down, break that down even more. Minute after minute, excuse me, second after second, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. You so-called blacks and Hispanics are being dominated by the other nations. But all you have to do is just repent and keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God in the faith of Christ, the black Messiah of Israel, and we will be over these nations. But you want to go along with the other nations. So these curses came upon you. Go ahead. Give me that and uh, go to verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters. All right, thy sons and thy daughters. Yeah, give me this right here. Thy sons and thy daughters, I'm speaking to you so-called blacks and Hispanics that are out here, and Native Americans that are walking up and down the street right now. Your sons and daughters were given unto another people. Go ahead. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, Go ahead. and then I shall look and fear with longing for them all the day long. You are fair for longing for them all the day long. 
That means that your sons and your daughters were taken by every nation, every nation on the face of this earth. There are 18 nations in Genesis chapter 10. All of those nations played a part in the slave trade to take you and put you in bondage and take your children from you. But yet you continue to keep following behind these nations over and over again. And each and every Sabbath, we're out here bringing the word of God to you. The true word of God, that your preachers are not going to tell you what the word of God is about. Not going to tell you who you are, where you come from. Not going to tell you about your nationality. Not going to tell you about the kingdom to come, that you are going to rule. And you so-called blacks and Hispanics, repent from your sins. Go ahead. Give me verse 37. Verse 37. No, oh, wait, let me finish with 32. I want to stay on this thing for a second about your sons and daughters giving on to another people. The people that you look up to and idolize. Your Jay-Z's. Your Floyd Mayweather's. Your Beyonce's. All of these people that are within the 12 tribes of Israel that you look up to, you look up to him. But this is what's happened to us as a people. Read that again, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, uh -huh. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. All the day long. So you, you walk up to those that you idolize and you look up to, ask them if they have, if they know about their true family tree. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So there be no might in thy hand. So no matter what you look at your entertainers and your athletes and the people that you look up to, they still have no power to stand before their enemies. No power whatsoever. And they have no power to bring justice that was done to our people. So they're nothing but puppets according to this system that continue to keep oppressing you. Give me verse 37. Verse 37. How you doing, mother? You have a question, mother? And thou shalt become an astonishment. Uh, hold on. You got a question, brother? All right, I need you to come closer, brother. Give me Leviticus 21 and 5. I need, you, I need to talk with you, brother. You, you can hear me, right? You love God? You love God? Are you a Christian? You believe you're a Christian, a Muslim? What, what is your faith? You don't have any faith whatsoever? You don't have any belief? You just believe God? Okay, so you just believe God. So how can you just believe God if you have no understanding of what God requires from you? See, in order for you to believe God, you have to have an understanding what He requires from you. And then you have to do what He requires from you in order for you to believe in Him. You understand? Give me that. Where you at that? Leviticus 21 verse 5. This is a law that you're violating right now. You understand? So many, many times we believe that we love God, right? But no one has taught us what God requires from us as Israelites. You are Israelite. What's the seed of your father? What, what is your father? Where does your father come from? You see your father on this chart right here? African-American, so-called African-American, Benjamin, West Indian, Levi, Haitians. Do you see your father there? Is your father from the South? Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia. Is that where your father is from, brother? So you don't know where your father is from? African American, so called African American. That's a byword. Because you cannot be named after two continents, and then we have that pride of Africa all the time. You see people walking around with African medallions and all this type of stuff like that with the symbol or the shape of the African continent or a shirt of African continent on their shirt. But that's named after a European, uh, a European uh, mercenary. You can call him a mercenary. He was a killer. You understand? Out of, out of the, um, what was he, from the Roman army. You understand that defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic Wars. Leo Scipicanus Africanus. You understand? That's, that is who they named that continent after. Give me, um, matter of fact, hold that. Give me Genesis 49 and 11. We're going to prove that the Bible is a real book because a lot of us that's talking about Africa and going back to Africa, they say the first pan-African people, people that believe in Africa, pro-African, you understand what I'm saying? And usually they, they out of this tribe. Excuse me for a second. Usually they out of this tribe right here, Judah, the American black, Africa, power to the people, red, black, and green. You understand? All of that power. I came from that era too myself. You understand? But we're going to tell you in the Bible, because I used to believe that this was a white man's book. No one could give me this book. I don't want to hear this book. This is the book of the crackers. This is the book of the so-called devils. I'm, I'm African. You understand? My people come from Africa, from Kenya, Ethiopia. That's what I used to believe. 
You understand? But the Bible opened up my eyes and tell and showed me that we are not Africans and God is against the Africans. Give me that and um yeah, read that. Psalms. Psalms 49 verse verse 11. Read that. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Now, he's talking about how the Europeans came into power. That their houses are going to be forever. Their nations are going to be forever. And they were going to go around and conquer all lands. All lands. And they're going to put their name there. Go ahead, continue. And their dwelling places to all generations. And, and to all generations. No one is going to bring me down. I'm, I'm the God of this world. You understand? Go ahead. They call their lands. They call their lands. They call their lands. After their own names. They call their lands. Now, as far as we've been taught, they supposed to have come out of Europe from what we know, right? But they came from somewhere else before that. But I'm going to deal with the fact of how they came out of Europe. They call their lands. Europe is just one land. But they call their lands. See, this is a prophecy of how they was going to come out of Europe and just dominate the world. They call their lands. Do you know some lands that you can name that was named after the so-called white man? You can, you can even think about right here in America. That's, that's another name, America. That's, that's from an Italian explorer. How about Washington, George Washington? We hustle for that dollar bill, you understand? And we hustle for that dollar bill with George Washington's name on there. You understand? With well, his name and his picture on there. Washington. Washington, D.C. Washington State. You understand? It comes from what's supposed to be the so-called first president. You understand? So it's prophecy that that was going to happen. We hustling for that dollar. That dollar, we need that dollar to pay that rent. We need that dollar to eat. You understand? We need that dollar to survive. You understand? Read that part where their name is going to be on the land. They call their lands after their own names. After their own names. George Washington. Or you got Abraham Lincoln. You take Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. That was named after him. You understand? So what they did, this is prophecy. This is not the white man's book. This book, hold that book up. This book here exposes what they've been doing. And this was written thousands of years by the prophets. Thousands of years ago by the prophets. You understand? From Christ. Because when you look in the Bible, it says, the word of the Lord came on to me. So what the Christians do to destroy our mind, when they teach you, the, when they claim they're teaching you the Bible, they say the very word has come on to the prophets. The word of the Lord came on to me. The word of the Lord is Christ. You understand? So Christ came to the prophets. See, that's a very serious thing that they've done to us in these Christian churches. The word of the Lord came onto me. Many times that you read this in the Bible, that is Christ coming to the prophets. He's the word of God. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Where you at right there? That's it on that right there? So we here, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. We here to bring the word, the true word of God to our people. Because every time we out here on the Sabbath, we see our people suffering. And even during the week when we're doing our normal things, well, yes, we have jobs too. We are there, not, these men that you see in front of you, we are not bums. We take care of our families and we take care of our wives. You understand? So we out here bring the word to bring correction to you from what we have learned and from what we have repented from. Now, give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Because you love the other nations, but you hate your own people. And we're going to find out why you love the other nations? Read verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Thou shalt become an astonishment. You are an astonishment to the other nations. You want to run behind the other nations. Martin Luther King Jr. said, join the other nations. But the Bible says the other nations are astonished by you. But you ran behind the teachings of Martin Luther King Jr. to go with the other nations. But God said the other nations are astonished at you. So when you're in a church saying, we shall overcome, we shall overcome, and you're holding hands with the other nations, the other nations are astonished by the way that you live. They may not tell you that in your face when you're in a church with them. Go ahead. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a Wait. proverb. An astonishment. You know what an astonishment is? You got projects that's right down the street right here. We pray for our people to come out of their madness. But when you go inside these buildings, you'll see human waste on the steps inside the projects. That's an astonishment. That is an astonishment. All the other nations are astonished by the way that you live. 
You live in you live in the building and you're urinating in the staircase. Then you go upstairs into your house. And then you inside the church talking about you we shall overcome. Madness. Struck with madness. Struck with madness. That's right. Human waste and human human waste from your bowels is in the staircase of the projects. You women are walking down the street with your behind showing. You women are walking out here with your breast showing, with pants on, showing the shape of your camel toe. The other nations are astonished by the way that you live, but you want to continue to cleave on to them instead of correcting, getting corrected from this Bible. And your enemies are not going to help you. An enemy is an enemy. An enemy is not meant to help you. It's meant to bring you under subjection and keep you in slavery, mentally, spiritually, and physically. You Israelites are destroyed out here. Where you at? A proverb. A proverb. Now we're going to deal with the proverb. The American blacks, the tribe of Judah, don't want to work. That's a proverb. Lazy. Always trying to get over. Always trying to steal. Always doing negativity. Always on welfare. Go ahead. Uh, wait. A proverb. Then you're dealing with the so-called West Indians which means Western Savage. You know why it means Western Savage? The white man tell you that every time you look at his cowboy movies. He doesn't identify the people as the tribe of Gad. He knows they're the tribe of Gad. He calls them American Indian. Indian meaning savage. So when you look at Clint Eastwood and John Wayne and all those other so-called white men that you look up to, but the Bible is here to teach you that you're more powerful than they are. And they say they call them savage. Go ahead. And a byword, a byword, um, a byword. Look at these niggas. Nigger is a byword. Black is a byword. Black. You come over here, you look at our shoes and look at our pants. That's the color black. You are not that color. And black is a negative thing that they, they use that word black and made it negative and attached it to you. So you can think that you negative. Everything. Black Monday. That's a negative day. Everything that's black is meant to be negative. Black sheep, negative. Everything that's black. You look at the, Malcolm X said one time a long time ago, Malcolm X, I quote Malcolm X, he said that angel food cake is white and devil's food cake is black. So the devil was associated with being black. And that name is placed over you, so you think that you negative. Go ahead. And thou shalt become an astonishment. An astonishment. All the other nations are astonished. A proverb and a byword. A proverb calling you all out of your out of your name. If you're American black, you from the tribe of Judah. You're not ape or muli. These people talk about you behind your back. Some of them say it in your face. But you don't want to come to this Bible. Why? Because you want you want to live in a fantasy land. But the Bible is a book of reality for you so-called blacks and Hispanics out here. Right. Among all nations, among, among all nations, among all nations, so all other nations, according to Genesis chapter 10, verse 18, all other nations think this way about you. Right. Verse 41, thou shalt beget sons and daughters, thou shalt beget sons and daughters. Again, Moses is repeating this again. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, you're going to have children. When you was in slavery, you, when you was in a physical slavery, you had children inside the shed. And what happened? Go ahead. But thou shalt not enjoy them. You didn't enjoy your children. You know how you enjoy your children? You think you enjoy your children now. When your child learns how to walk, you enjoying that. When your child speaks his first words, you enjoying that. At that time, we did not enjoy that because the child was taken from the mother and the father and sold somewhere else. So you did not enjoy your children. But yet you don't want to deal with this. And no one was ever brought to judgment for this sin that was committed against us. Go ahead. For they shall go into captivity. They shall go into captivity into the other nations. The other nations brought them into captivity. You did not enjoy your children. So where are your, your heroes and your leaders at to bring this forward? Where's your Al Sharpton and your Charles Barrett, C. Vernon Mason and all the rest of these so-called leaders of these Negroes that's supposed to be leading you. They leading you straight to death. They don't have power to bring the judgment for this. Only Christ can. 
Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee. The stranger that's within thee. We're going to deal with the stranger right now that is within thee. We're going to deal with that right now. The stranger that's within thee. Go ahead. Shall get above thee very high. Shall get above thee very high. So you so-called blacks, no matter how much you try to compete against the so-called white man in the other nations, you are below them. You are below them. And we're going to give you an example of that. When you're working in a, a corporate office, nine times out of ten, you carry a briefcase just like the so-called white man. But inside his briefcase, he's got documents concerning the company. What do you have? A newspaper inside of there. You're not on the same level as him. Affirmative action was a bone that was thrown to you. Equal opportunity employment was a bone that was thrown to you. You're supposed to have your own economy. Your own land and your own military. And then you call affirmative action when you get denied something. But you blacks and Hispanics don't understand that you are supposed to have your own, not rely on affirmative action. So that's how they over you. You got to go to an organization affirmative action to get some kind of results. When you're supposed to be ruling this planet, ruling this world, and the other nations answering to you. The other nations giving you tribute. The other nations giving you taxes. But you love to be a servant to the other nations. Go ahead. And thou shall come down very low. And you shall come down what? Very low. You at the bottom. Very low. You very happy that you got a house. But then yet you got to get a mortgage for 30 years. 30 year mortgage to pay off a house on stolen land. The blood of the Gadites. The so-called American Indians is crying out on the ground while you paying your property tax to the government. 30 years for a mortgage. You cannot see that this is slavery here? 30 years. And you jumping up and down, you got a house. Where's your land and your military and your economy? That house is built on the blood of the Gadites and off the backs of the so-called blacks. Go ahead. Where you at? That's it? 44. Yeah, go to 44. He, uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 44. Uh -huh. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee. Right here in front of us right now, Capital One Bank. This is prophecy being fulfilled. This institution right here was built off the slave trade. After that, you've been dominated, raped, murdered, and had everything taken from you, they built financial institutions, and then you have to go to them for a loan, when you will not establish anything for yourself. Your mentality is to serve the other nations and to cleave onto the other nations. That's why the other nations do not respect you so-called blacks and Hispanics out here and Native Americans. Because every nation that is led by that man of that nation, he makes a way for himself to lead his people. You so-called blacks and Hispanics do not do that. Satisfied with being, with dancing, and entertaining, playing basketball, That's right. and rapping, and all manner of foolishness. But meanwhile, the other nations are setting up financial institutions that you have to borrow from. And they're already prejudiced and racist against you. Hey. What, the bro what the brother's saying is absolutely correct. You so-called blacks and Hispanics, you Negroes in the audience, you West Indian blacks, you are satisfied with the crumbs that America gives you. You are satisfied with being a slave. Your ancestors were a slave and so are the walking descendants today. Whether it's spiritually, mentally, and physically. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2.14. Jeremiah 2.14. Let's see what God says. Is this recorded in the Holy Bible? You better bet it is. Yes, it is recorded in the Holy Bible. That you so-called blacks and Hispanics, you have a slave mind state. You love Babylon the Great. You love America. You love oppression. Because if you didn't like oppression, you'll be keeping God's commandments. So we could get up the up out of here when Christ makes his second return. Jeremiah 2.14. Jeremiah 2 verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Read it again. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? So God is asking you blacks in the audience, you West Indian blacks, you Hispanics, are you a slave? Are you a homeborn servant? 
because you love your condition. Come out here on Rockaway and Glenwood, you so-called blacks, you don't own none of the financial institutions around here. None of these stores, from the Walgreens all the way down to the Radio Shack. You must go to your enemies in the want of all things. We have been here for over 400 years and we still are destroyed as a nation of people. We are still being afflicted. We are still in oppression. Why? We're gonna, add, we're gonna tell you why. God tells you why in the Holy Bible. The same book you got at home collecting dust reveals the answers to your problem. All you have to do is open and read it. Give me Hosea 5.15. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Let's hear what God says. Hosea 5 verse 15. I will go and return to my place. So God said he's going to go and return to his place. Because at one time the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was walking with us. But then he left when we went into slavery. Why? Because it was prophesied that the children of Israel would break God's commandments. And he would send us into slavery by way of slave ship. Yes, your history is documented in the Bible, in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So God said he will go and return to his place. Read. Till they acknowledge the offense. Till they, who's the they? You Israelites, you black women, you black men, you Hispanic women, Hispanic men, the Native Americans, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. God said he will go and return to his place until they acknowledge their offense. What was our offense? Breaking God's commandments, woman in pants, breaking the Sabbath day, buying, selling, and working on God's holy sanctified day, which is today. Black on black crime, murder, that is sin according to the Bible. Adul uh, adultery, idolatry. Our people into these different denominations and religions that you cannot find in the Bible. That was our offense. Read. And seek my face. How shall we seek out, seek out God's face? God's face is where? In the Bible. Because God's words are in the Bible. How do we seek him out? By repenting to the Most High and seeking our history in the Bible. Seeking his laws in the Bible. How is God going to make us seek him? By afflicting us. Afflicting us. What happened to Mike Brown? Guess what? That's affliction. Oppression is affliction. Last hired, first fired is affliction. Making up the majority of the prison system is affliction. Black on black murder is affliction. White Jesus is affliction. Christianity is affliction. The woman ruling the men is affliction. Read what you got. In the affliction, in our affliction, they will, meaning in our hell, when we catching hell, when you blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans are catching hell, read, they will seek me early. That's when we're gonna seek God early. Cause you so-called Negroes, you West Indian blacks, you Haitian blacks, you Hispanics out here, you don't care about God. You don't care about God. You know when you care about God? When you catch a bullet. Or when there's another Mike Brown or Trayvon Martin. That's when you want to you wanna protest, you want to say, oh Jesus, help me. When you're not getting afflicted, you don't care about God, about God. You care about God when you're in your affliction. So the Most High knows the only way you're going to wake up is when he sends fire on you. When he sends affliction your way. Read it again from the top. Hosea 5 verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge the offense and seek my face in the affliction. In our affliction. When you so-called blacks and Hispanics are being afflicted, oppressed, read. They will seek me early. God say, when I do that to you, then you'll seek me early. When I send more Hurricane Katrinas, more earthquakes in Haiti, more Mike Brown situations, Trayvon Martin situations, police brutality, black on black crime, high AIDS rate, God says when I send more of that, that's when you're going to acknowledge me. Because if I don't send it, you're not going to give a damn. You don't care about the Most High, nor do you care about his laws. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall lend to thee. They show you the arrogance that they have towards the, you so-called blacks, and Hispanics and Native Americans out here, after you were destroyed by these other nations, 
and they took everything from you, now he's going to lend to you, and you're not going to be able to lend to him. Any, any of you blacks and Hispanics come up here and tell us right now, where is, your, where is our financial system at? That's where the power is at of this world. Whoever controls the financial institutions control this world. Where is the financial institutions that we control? I'm not talking about controlling a couple of buildings. The banking system. He shall lend to thee. A lot of you so-called blacks and Hispanics even violating the Sabbath by even going in there handling business today on the Sabbath. But you're going in there right now as we speak in this word, this verse right now. He shall lend to thee. And you're going in there looking for a loan right now at this very moment. Some of you blacks hear this right now going and looking for a loan. Read that loud. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee for college tuition. He shall lend to thee for a car. He shall lend to thee for a house. He shall lend to thee. You do not have the finances to maintain this. Very few blacks and Hispanics, if you're not playing basketball, or if you're not rapping, or you're not on the, on the stage telling jokes, you cannot afford to maintain those things. You may have one out of the three. The majority of you don't even have all three of them. But you go to the same descendants of those people that destroyed us for a loan. Read it again one more time, that he shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee. The word of the Lord is speaking to you so-called blacks right now, because this bank is right in front of us. He shall lend to thee. Then you got to go in there and hope that he will give it to you. Even if you have good credit, he could sit behind the desk and look at you and say, I don't like this nigga. A byword, Deuteronomy 28, verse 37, that we just read about 10 minutes ago. I don't like this nigga. I'm going to deny him the loan. No, but I've got A1 credit, and you're still denied. Why? Because he shall lend to thee. The reason why he shall lend to thee and have power over thee like that is because he destroyed you. And we're going we're gonna to get the scripture to prove that. Hold that. Give me Zechariah 11 and 5. Because we're going to read this scripture, and where this scripture is going to go to and lead to, it's going to lead right to Capital One Bank. going to lead right to TD Bank. Right to Bank of America. Bank of America. That tells you right there. Bank of America. Go ahead. Zechariah 11 verse 5. Uh -huh. Whose possessor slave him? Whose possessor slave slayed him? A lot of you so-called blacks and Hispanics, you like to go on a computer and Google things. So why don't you go and Google the origin of Capital One Bank? And you'll find out it's the possessors who slayed us. Why don't you go Google that? Google the, the, the origin of TD Bank. He shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him. But you black men and Hispanic men walking around here with your chest all out. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.